Hi, welcome to the Arby's StanCon 2020 presentation. So my name is Ravine. Uh, I am a core contributor to Arby's and PyMC3. Um, in work-wise, I've worked at SpaceX and I now work at Sweetgreen and my specialty is helping uh, businesses make decisions under uncertainty, particularly businesses that have some sort of physical component like a supply, supply chain or manufacturing. Uh, but I want to point out that this presentation isn't just my work and neither is Arby's. It's the work of a fairly diverse and international uh, community. So here we're going to have the same talk that I'm providing in English in, uh, in many different languages by many of the folks uh, who contribute to Arby's. And I want to go through them um, and give them an introduction one by one as well. So we have Ari. Uh, you might recognize him because he is on the development team of Stan. He particularly works on uh, on heavily on PyStan and also um, on RVs a whole bunch. You've got Oriel. Oriel has a master's in astrophysics, and uh, he is going to be doing a PhD in Bayesian model diagnostics. And you can tell if you go to his blog, and you'll see numerous blog posts that go into the the details and the nitty gritty about various Bayesian by Bayesian diagnostics. I think he does a pretty good job of explaining the math and the intuition be behind all of them. Uh, we also have Alex. Uh, Alex is a core contributor to PyMC3 and Arby's as well. And uh, Alex runs the Learning Bayesian Statistics podcast uh, he, where he interviews numerous notable figures in the, in the Bayesian space. Uh, most recently, he interviewed Andrew, uh, Jennifer Hill, and Aki on, um, on Regression and Other Stories, the book that they just published. So highly recommend subscribing to his Patreon to get early access and additional access to all the content that he creates. And uh, we have Piyush as well. Piyush is a Google Summer of Code student that is helping us out um, by expanding the capability of, uh, of inference data. And so inference data is largely going to be the topic of this talk. Let us just jump into the agenda. So we're going to we're going to talk about all the steps that are in a Bayesian workflow. We'll talk about where Arby's fits in and then we're going to spend most of our time talking about inference data, um, where that fits into the community, where we can improve with it, and then where you could use inference data um, and Arby's in your day to day Bayesian workflow. So the Bayesian workflow is more than just specifying a model and running inference. Um, certainly, those are the components that are maybe the uh, the most notable. You can you stand to create or uh, define a model. You can also use Stan then to perform inference with the no uterine sampler or any, any one of the MCMC samplers to, to generate samples. But just defining a model and generating samples uh, doesn't constitute everything that could be needed or could be useful in a full workflow. So Arby's fits in for the other things. It fits in where for evaluating prior predictive distributions. It fits in for evaluating um, out of sampler um, diagnostics, providing out of sampler diagnostics. Um, it helps you summarize the posterior. And so what Arby's really is meant to be is a complement to whatever PPL that you happen to be using to uh, aid with the other steps that are in a full Bayesian workflow. So in here, you know, the, the probabilistic programming language choice may depend on the syntax you like or the sampler that you want to use, but at least in the MCMC um, probabilistic programming languages, uh, you're going to get the same stuff. You get, you'll get chains, draws, or samples. Um, draw slash samples, depending on what terminology you use. Uh, but then you're going to use that and, and do largely the same thing. You'll perform diagnostics to get an estimate of your model, model fit compared to others, perhaps. You're going to have trace plots or rank plots. Um, and of course, the modeling intent is to help characterize some uncertainty for whatever problem that you're working on. So here we have the logos of, uh, of many different PPLs. And you're going to notice that one logo here isn't quite a probabilistic programming language. And that's because Arby's doesn't actually care too much about the specific probabilistic programming languages. It just cares about the way, um, about the data that comes from them. And what comes out of the probabilistic programming languages is a whole bunch of arrays. Uh, that one logo that was the out of place one is that center top one, that's X array, which we'll, you know, the X stands for many arrays. And uh, the reason being is there are many arrays that come out of a Bayesian workflow. You're going to get the prior predictive distribution potentially. You're almost definitely going to get a posterior, sorry, you're going to get a prior predictive samples. You'll get posterior samples. Um, each of those posterior samples could have diverged or not, not diverged. It's, you know, could be useful for diagnostics. 
There's gonna be log probabilities associated with each if you're using a gradient-based sampler. And um, even, even with just these four, um, the arrays aren't simple. They, they're not just one-dimensional arrays or even two-dimensional arrays, and they're not even the same shape arrays. So if we take a hierarchical model, um, like the centered eight, sorry, like the eight schools example, um, there is a centered sort of, there's, sorry, there's a hierarchical distribution at the top, which generates one sample, and then you have eight samples from each one of the schools. So it becomes quite sort of an array soup when you're working in Bayesian analysis. Um, data frames were particularly helpful with tabular data, 2D data, for indexing, slicing, and referring to columns. And Bayesian, Bayesian data is just more dimensions on top of that and more arrays on top of that. So we believe, or we know that Bayesian data is just, it's higher dimensional and it has many of the same challenges for the end user in terms of index sample, index slicing um, and referencing any one of the, any one of the um, uh, samples or whatever they may be that can come from any one of these um, arrays. So inference data is our answer to that or, or our path to that. Um, the full specification of inference data is that this link, but let's provide a high level right here. In RVs, uh, we start with the X-ray library and just reading off of their, their statement uh, right here. X-ray is an open source project that makes working with multi working with labeled multi-dimensional arrays simple, efficient, and fun. And that's really what a posterior um, samples are. It's a multi-dimensional arrays that has chains, draws, and then um, dimensions for each one of uh, the variables, for instance. But posteriors aren't the only thing that we have. Like we said before, we could have prior predictive distributions. We have our observations, which is which is an array. We have we have sampler statistics. So Arby's um, Arby's takes all of these X-ray objects, all these X-ray data sets, and it wraps them into um, an inference data object. And so an inference data has what's called groups. Each one of these groups represents a sort of major array that comes out of um, a Bayesian workflow. And this is what it looks like in Python. But of course, like we said before, Arby's is not, or sorry, the inference data specification is not just a Python spec. Um, and the way we know that is that inference data then can serialize to NetCDF. Um, and NetCDF is a persistent um, file format um, in a particular way, sort of like in a CSV or a JSON, NetCDF is, is a sort of data specification that stores on disks. It's language agnostic. It's actually not even a Bayesian. It's just a general spec for storing uh, multidimensional data. So we'll get into more examples of this so it's more concrete. But the idea is keeping everything nice and clean and organized and um, just very easy to use. The, the, big, uh, the big points from inference data, you can read and write local net CDF objects to disk that are, that are persistent. Um, you can generate inference data in memory from PyStan, um, all the stand interfaces that you see here, but also from many other PPLs as well. And so if we're gonna load an inference data object, and let's just talk about one right here. Here's, here's us loading um, a net CDF object that, happens, that has the inference data spec um, into, into uh, Arby's. So here you have the posterior distribution. And when we click on this and explode it out, you'll see that there's chains, draws, and in this particular case, counties. What we have loaded is the, the uh, radon, um, an inference run over the radon model. The radon model is uh, a hierarchical model that estimates the, um, the amount of radon that you have in a basement, depending on actually whether you have a base, sorry, the, radon, the amount of radon in a home, depending on whether you have a basement or not, and what, so in Minnesota County you live in. So in this case, county is one of the, um, the dimensions of the data, but we also have all the other um, all the other groups that come out of Bayesian analysis. We have uh, our prior predictive here, and we have the observed data. So not necessarily an outcome of the of the of the statistics themselves, but certainly uh, a necessary input to a full Bayesian workflow and the actual observations that you've you've uh, observed. Um, we have the log likelihoods, we have sample statistics that come from the, uh, the sample itself. And having all of this helps us a whole bunch as we'll see down the line. The generate inference data object from, from the Py, from, sorry, from PyStan, um, here's the code in, in Python. Here's our observations that we've simulated. Here's our, our stand model. And then, um, we just run the fit 
using the stand interface and then using um, Arby's from PyStan uh, method. We, we pass in the posterior, we pass in the observed data, and we get in the sample, we get out the sample statistics, the observed data, and the posterior. You'll notice this doesn't have all the groups as we saw before. This particular analysis was much simpler, so all the groups weren't required. But this is the idea with inference data. It's meant to fit any workflow that you happen to be using in a MCMC patient context. So the whole point of this, and the whole reason for this, is organized data makes complex calculations much, much easier for everybody. So here's an example. If we want to um, explore posterior and perform some diagnostics on it, uh, we will load an inference data object that has the posterior and some sample statistics. In this case, we're loading this one from a pre-computed data set, uh, sort of a data library of inference data sets. And uh, we get we get a rank plot. Uh, on our rank plot, we get the kernel density estimate of the posterior parameters, uh, mu and tau right here from the center date. The rug plot here shows where the where divergences occurred um, in sampling, and then uh, we also get a rank plot here on the right. Relatively easy to create because we don't have to pass in each thing individually. The inference data object has has it all, and making this plot uh, becomes quite simple. If we want to do uh, pure diagnostics, again, we just pass in an inference data object to Arby's and we get the, um, the diagnostic here. Another example is prior predictive checks. We have observed data and we have, a prior, we have prior predictive samples. Um, creating a prior predictive plot is again, fairly trivial. So you, we have all of our prior predictive distributions um, as generated by the sampler and then we have the kernel density estimate of the observed data. And the most complicated example is this leave one out probability integral transform. In this case, we have the log likelihood posterior and observed data. All three of those helps us generate uh, this plot here. So this, the benefits of Arby's and particularly inference data are, are manifold. Um, independent of the Arby's library itself, the consistent data representation uh, helps across languages and PPLs because now different um, folks using different PPLs don't have to think about all the various ways they should store data or um, have to juggle so many objects in memory themselves. They can just pa uh, package it all in the inference data and then they have a single reference that uh, cap encapsulates everything that they need in, uh, in their, their uh, volatile memory or RAM space or computer memory. Um, another large benefit is that because the inference data lends itself to being uh, serialized on disk in a, in a in the NetCDF format, you don't have to rerun your sampling every time you want to start your analyses or whatever. Again, you can just load up an existing NetCDF object or the one that you just generated, uh, let's say yesterday or the, or the day prior, and just continue on then with estimating your effects or diagnostics or, or whatever, what have you. The ability to quote unquote save um, your work is quite useful. Um, because we all know that some inference runs take quite a long time. Um, those are the personal benefits, but the benefits in the community are also there. So you can share data sets to encourage reproducibility um, and just all the things associated with open, open science. So if, let's say um, for me at work, I can run it, I can generate an inference run that, that provides maybe some insight and then I can pass that, that net CDF object off to a colleague who can then further dive into other portions of the distribution, or if we're taking the counties, perhaps other counties that I haven't quite taken a look at. If you are trying to reproduce a paper and they provide an inference data object, then you can recreate the plots that they've uh, maybe published in the paper, but you can also do your own sort of secondary checks to uh, look, look at things that maybe weren't in the paper themselves. And from um, the code community perspective, it lets the probabilistic programming language designers focus on the probabilistic programming language themselves and uh, and lets them defer, let's say the diagnostics or, or plotting to RVs or, or, or another library. So instead of uh, instead of having to do both the MCMC sampler and all the, all the same trace plots and all of that, they can we can just separate the two. And then between the diagnostics libraries, if we all use a common format, then um, Folks can use whatever library or whatever language suits them best to uh, interact with your diagnostics library or your plotting library. 
So there are some limitations, like we said before. Um, all of this is very MCMC specific. Uh, inference data is not well suited right now to variational inference or other, other sort of um, posterior estimating methods. Uh, but we're really hoping that we can expand to to capture the full base community and not just the MCMC community. Uh, and then also notably, it doesn't fix the reproducibility problem in its entirety. Of course, the sampling itself has already been performed and it doesn't help you reproduce the sampling steps. Um, but we do hope it helps provide reproducibility um, and, and ease of use in most of the workflow steps um, and that the PPLs themselves can provide reproducibility steps specific to each probabilistic programming language and engine. So what can you do to help? Um, inference data, again, don't think of it just as an Arby's thing. It, it is just a format specification. So if you're designing a PPL or you're creating another plotting package, uh, consider using or allowing your package to interface with the inference data specification. So um, then we have interoperability between all of our Bayesian code um, and don't have to do a bunch of array transformations to go from one to another. Um, again, you don't need to use RVs or you don't need to use Python for inference data to be usable. And uh, we want to make that point by uh, modifying our logo here to say we are very welcoming of R or any other language, Scala or what have you, um, to, to using inference data. So we could use your help, of course, this being a community effort. Uh, we could use help publishing or sorry, polishing the schema, expanding it out to be useful in um, in your space, or help us think of things that we haven't we haven't thought of. Um, of course, additional plots and diagnostics are helpful for the RVs package in a whole. Skin doesn't mean code contributions directly, but just ideas and thoughts. For example, Aki uh, published the rank plots idea in a paper, and then we just happened to also implement it in RVs. The same goes for any other sort of plots or diagnostics. Um, like any open source project, we we love. Any code help, we love feedback and issue tickets. Um, if you publicly share your work, that helps us see how people are using the library. And of course, cool plots on uh, Twitter or whatever else help just, are just nice for the community for us to see all the, the neat work that everyone is doing. And um, from sort of a nuts to bolts perspective, there are just a lot of core computational things we can do to make inference data even better. So support for sparse data structures would be very nice, would reduce the amount of memory um, in RAM, but also this, you know, the write and load speeds, sorry, yeah, the write and, and uh, load speeds for, for um, the inference data objects and still be smaller and all of those associated types of benefits. There's, there's a laundry list of these that we haven't provided here, but inference data itself can get much better. So if you're looking for more information, we have a bunch of links here. Um, please feel free to go into any one of these. And there's a, um, Arby's is also a NumFocus uh, sponsored library. So Everything you would expect from any of the other NumFocus libraries, including Stan, which is one of them, you can expect of the Arby's community. And we are, again, very open to contributions, discussions, issue tickets, what have you. And of course, contrib contributions if you're willing to uh, put the time in. So thank you so much for watching this presentation. I look forward to our discussion section.